Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in with me, William Wallace, as you know, my show. And today I'm with State Representative Bo Billier. I'm gonna let you tell me, let, let him tell you his district, because I actually forgot the number. But Bo, how are you today? Thanks do, for coming do, on. Doing very well. It's District 48. It's, District 48. Uh, uh, a lot of Iberia Parish, a uh, good chunk of uh, Lafayette Parish, and a little sliver of St. Martin Parish in the heart of Acadiana. I love that area. My, my brother's from out there. In, the, in those neck of the woods. It's a good place to be from. We got, we got good, hardworking people there, and it's, uh, it's, it's just an honor and awesome to be able to represent them. Isn't it one of the fastest growing areas in Louisiana? It is, it, especially when you're looking at Youngsville and Broussard area, big economic development announcements yesterday. We're creating over 1,000 jobs. Uh, the Port of Iberia, we had an announcement a couple of weeks ago, 450 jobs with Turner Industries. Just a lot of good things happening in Acadiana, and uh, I'm, again, I'm, I'm just, Proud to be part of the process. I love it. Well, even though we're in the health and education chamber today, which is what you'll see in the background with the, the council rooms here at the Capitol, today we're going to be talking with Bo about some of his fiscal bills and some of the other bills that are going on here in this session. So, so Bo, this is a fiscal session. What are your concerns fiscally for Louisiana? And then let's talk so much your legislation to help. Well, uh, my concerns with Louisiana, a couple of things, is we've been talking for years about our antiquated tax system. Uh, we, we make it difficult for our businesses to, to operate in Louisiana. We make it difficult for our, our citizens to pay taxes in Louisiana. And when, when folks are looking from the outside in, our tax system is, is, is just complex. We get uh, failing ratings from the, the national tax rating uh, foundations. And, uh, you know, it's my hope that by the end of the session, we can clean some of that up. What's well, interesting, you say the people from the outside looking in that, that know about it, but for most Louisianians, you know, we don't realize, or most people don't realize, I say we, I can't put me in that because I'm aware, because I'm here, spend a lot of time here, but, but many Louisianians don't realize how complicated our tax structure is. So can you give us an example of that and then what this bill is going to do to fix it? Yeah, I can. The, the, the big bill that I'm working on is uh, working on with Speaker Sheck Snyder. It's on a streamline of the sales tax uh, system in Louisiana. Right now, if you're a small business owner uh, operating in multiple parishes throughout the state, you have enough file multiple returns throughout the state to m multiple different uh, agencies. We have 54 different collect tax collectors in Louisiana. Um, if you are a business operating in another state, there's only three states that have a decentralized sales tax system, and of course, Louisiana happens to be one of them. Right. If I'm a business in Arkansas selling in all 64 parishes online in Louisiana, I have a single sales tax return that I have to complete. In Louis if you're a Louisiana business doing business in all 64 parishes, you have 54 different returns that you have to complete. We make it more difficult for businesses to do business in Louisiana than for out-of-state businesses to, to do businesses remotely in Louisiana. So this streamlined sales tax bill, we've made it through the House. We had a, a presentation in the Senate committee, uh, was successful at getting it out of that committee, and now it goes to the Senate floor, uh, hopefully within the next week. And ultimately, the voters in Louisiana will have the opportunity uh, to decide whether they want the streamlined sales tax in Louisiana. Well, it's because of interviews like this that have given me a better understanding. And I got to tell you, you just enlightened me, you know, because I've always understood this bill to be more helping more of the, of the people doing online business in Louisiana. But now I appreciate you telling me that because our listeners are not, that are well, getting to hear this. I'll, I'll give you an example. I was stopped at, a, at a, buying some vegetable plants from my garden. Uh, bought some cantaloupe and some watermelon nice. to add to the garden this year. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be there in a couple months. Okay, good. <laughs> I picked a lot of cantaloupe last year. Uh, but anyway, I got stopped and was asking about tax reform, and we, she, the lady was asking me some questions, and we got on the, the streamline of the sales tax, and she was saying that her daughter sells on Etsy in a bunch of different parishes, and she talked about having to file sales tax returns all over the state of Louisiana and how she was very supportive of our efforts here. And she's a small... Um, I'm assume working out of her house if she's doing right. Etsy uh, and still having to comply with this complex tax system. We need to make it easier to do business in Louisiana, plain and simple. People want to not only make money, they want to have time to spend it, and when they spend money, it helps the economy. So another, right. another way this is helping the economy, right? That's right, that's right. Because <laughs> right. a little small business person doesn't have the resources that big businesses do. So what's your other legislation that... So, that uh, so I'm bringing back also my expenditure limit bill. Uh, last year it was unsuccessful. On, on the ballot, so I'm bringing it back. I think we, we need to do a better job at educating the people. The expenditure limit bill, uh, basically it, it says the state has to live within its means. 
plain and simple. I remember that one. And so we're gonna we're bringing that back. Uh, we're gonna hear it on the House floor, uh, hopefully within the next week. Uh, but so I'm I'm hoping that we it, it takes two thirds of a vote to get it out of the House and the Senate. So I'm hoping we can get the support. That the bipartisan support that we had last year for the bill. Will that one go to be a, co a constitutional amendment? It will. It will. Because I remember that constitutional amendment number four, we talked about that on the show last year. Yeah. You know, and worked really hard at that, and, uh, and, and hopefully you'll go through this time. Yeah. I have another bill also, not related to tax reform, but a micro winery bill. Okay. You've heard of micro breweries where we want to try and create a new industry in Louisiana for micro wineries. I was a, a approached by a business that is looking to, to locate into Louisiana and, and, and put a bunch of different locations. So we're, we're working through the pro process, working with all the stakeholders, and be nice to create an industry in Louisiana that doesn't even exist. And so we're we're optimistic. And I know I've joked and said I know very little about the wine <laughs> making process. I only know the consumer side of it. I like that. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because these are the, these are the little bills that people don't, that go unnoticed that I think are, are, have a bigger impact to our economy than people realize. You know, uh, my brother that I brought up earlier, you know, they go to Texas a lot to go see because the, they have a lot of these little right. micro wineries over there. And uh, and, he's, and him and his wife love to, you know, go, go visit the wineries. But when you bring little businesses like that, you're not just creating businesses, but you're creating tourism dollars here. You know, people come to Louisiana not just to see our, you know, the uh, you know the swamps and the you know and the festivals, but now to see the, our wineries, especially if they if they become a new industry. There's all kind of things. Our, our Louisiana's economy is made up of primarily small business. Yeah. And so we just again have to make it easier for all those small businesses to do business in, in our state. We also have a, a bunch of other tax reform bills that we're, we're working on, from a corporate tax and uh, personal income tax. Uh, we're trying to, to lower the taxes. We're trying to make them broader um, and, again, simpler uh, for people to be able to identify the, their tax burdens and, and to be able to look at Louisiana as a, a tax-friendly state. Overall, and this is going to sound kind of tricky, but our, our tax burden is not one of the highest in the country. We're probably middle of the road, maybe a little south of that. Right. But our burden of being taxed is the worst. So that's what we're trying to improve is to create some sim simplicity and predictability, which is really important from a budgeting standpoint. I'm glad you pointed that out because a lot of people don't realize, you know, when you, when you talk about that, it, a lot of well, legislators realize that it's about broadening the base. It's about bringing in more people here, even though, as you just now pointed out, our tax burden might not be bad, but because we have such a, such a, a, a less of a population in those states, you know, it hits us harder. But if we focus on bringing more people in, which, you know, is doing the little things like microbreweries or, you know, bringing other businesses here, we increase our population. So the burden gets spread out so it doesn't hit people as hard. Would that be a li that's, the, the that, right way to put it? No, that's a, you, you got it figured out. That's exactly right. So that's what I hear about from the other legislators that are like yourself. <laughs> when, you, when, I, when, I, when I speak to people like you that say stuff like that, I realize that you have Louisiana in your best interest and the people of Louisiana in your best interest because you're looking at all the how all the pieces of the puzzle put together create the better picture yeah, of our you, state. Yeah, if you put any of them in a silo, it's hard to get a full picture. And, and I can find a negative aspect or even a positive aspect of anything in the silo. But when you look at it in Globo and, and you realize how different items affect each other, that's really the, the big picture. And, and when you start talking about tax reform, we have so many different exemptions and credits and uh, whatnot that tie into the other tax laws. Um, we, we've got to make it sim simpler uh, and, and more predictable for the state of Louisiana. Any other legislation you've got? Those are the main ones. I have, you know, a health care records bill for, the, for my Acadiana folks, uh, something dealing with the Lafayette Parish Executive Committee for the Republican Party that we're going to be hearing as well. So uh, those, are, those, are, those are the big pieces. Though. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, that, that when they say, well, those guys are just making all these laws. But a lot of people don't realize that it's not so much laws as much as it is, I'm going to say legislation, which is right. just another way of saying it. But, but uh, it's, it, it kind of describes, I think, better that it's up to you all here at our capital, representing the people in your districts, to bring forth legislation that creates the pathway to, to have a have better government, but also better systems in place. Yeah, and look, I'm in the beginning of my second year. It's the fourth uh, session, but this beginning of the second year. And I, I've joked and I've said, you know, it takes a, a lot of politics, or a lot of politicking to get elected, but then to get anything done in this building, 
you're dealing with a, I'm dealing with 104 other professional politicians on the, on the House side and then 39 on the Senate ultimately have to get it signed by the governor. So to get in here is one thing, to, to be effective at what you do is something totally different. That's the, some of the things that I'm trying to learn as a, as a rookie here and uh, try not to get caught into the, to the weeds too much, but to bring, well, I've been saying, you know, effective solutions to the people in Acadiana and the people in Louisiana. And what I'd like to point out, you're, 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 you're going to let me get, have a chance like a point now that a lot of people back in back watching my videos and listening to my show, I'll hear back from some people and they'll say, "Oh, but all those guys up there are doing is spending our money, or they're or they're you know they're creating all these laws, you know, or they're not doing what we want them to do. They're not doing the conservative agenda." And then of course the liberals say they're not doing the cons the liberal agenda. But when I look and interview people like yourself, and I want people to know that, 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 that I've had a lot of conversations with other representatives that are telling me what's going on, and people don't realize that while you may be conservative, somebody else may be liberal, when you get in this body, it's almost like you gotta put that aside a little bit, sometimes more than others, but you've gotta work with other legislators on their bills, and it's not about the power broker, the politicking, as much as it is about finding ways to create good legislation that will get through to help people in Louisiana. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, there's probably 75% of the things that on both sides of the aisle we agree on. There's probably 15% of the things that we, we have some tough negotiations on that we can come to a, a conclusion that's productive for Louisiana. And there's probably 10% of the items that we're just never going to agree on. Yeah. And so if, as long as you, you have to keep your values, you have to know what, what's true in your heart and what's true to your constituents' hearts, and you have to represent them. You don't give those up, uh, but you, you, know, you, 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 you have to work on their behalf to get things done because if you just say, hey, I'm not going to listen to the other side at all, you're not going to move the needle for the people back home, and they sent you here to move the needle. Right. And then also it's not just for your district, it's for all of That's Louisiana. Right. But you know, when you work with people that have their own districts and they're representing their 30, 40, 50,000 people in their districts, you know, sometimes working with them helps the people in their district. And then sometimes you need them to work with your district and you don't have to give up your ideologies. Sometimes, like you said, just come together and find that 75% that you agree on. The, the, the best tool you have in this building is, is, or these, the ears, to listen to the, to the other side. If, if I'm gonna be effective to get my point across, I really need to understand what the other side is thinking or, or they'll never hear me or listen to me. So it works both ways. You just, again, keep, you know, keep to your values, keep to your, your ideology. Don't, don't give up the reasons you, you got here, but, but you still need to listen. And find ways and find ways of working through the, for the benefit of Louisiana. Was well, there anything else that you want to point out? No, anything, just, is there any other body else you're working with with yeah, the so, legislation? Yeah, well, we've been, we, you know, the speaker on that that uh, sales tax bill has been uh, again a lot of my time. But we've been working. I've been working with, with Chairman Bishop and a team on ways and means the tax. We've been working for six, eight months on tax reform items. Uh, it's, you know, so it's not just while we're in session, so giving up a personal times outside of that to work on bills and, and to move it through the process. So it's a, this is not a, this is not the Bo Show by any means. This is a team effort um, and, and one person can't do it if we don't all work together and all move as, as a body. Uh, it's not going to be, get done and, you know, the jury's still out. We have a, a lot of time left in this session to go. We've moved some legislation. I'd like to see it move a little bit faster, uh, but, you know, the work's not even close to done yet. Not at all. Nope. I've been, I've, I guess I've been walking the hallways, listening to a lot of people, and and uh, like you said, it's it's for what's come out of the House goes to the Senate, and the Senate they kind of put their own amendments in it before it even comes back to you. Is that correct? That's exactly correct. Wow. Well, I invite I invite everybody, please share the video. This is Beau Billier, District 48. You said right? Yep. You know, out 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 in the Lafayette area, and uh, of course, if you like his this interview, please share the share share it. And let other people know, and I invite everybody also, that if you can't come to the Capitol to find what you're, you know, to hear some of this stuff that's going on, um, you can always hear other interviews at William Wallace for America on my podcast, my YouTube channel, my Facebook page. But you can also go to legis.la.gov and you can look and see what's on, what's being voted on, what's being committee, and you can watch live videos on what's happening. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for, for tuning in. Thank you all. Representative Billier, thank you yep, very much. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Y'all have a great day now.